Hello YouTube, welcome to the Avion blog. Today we're going to take a look at two different meters that I make use of quite regularly. Both of them more on the electrical side than the electronic side. One of them is the insulation resistance tester and the other one is the AC amp clamp meter or multimeter with clamp feature. Uh, these are two items that uh, on the electrical side of things are used pretty regularly so um, let's get straight into that review and take a look. Now, when it comes to insulation resistance testers, you get various different models. The unit that I make use of uh, in my business is the Toptronic, which is by Hellem and Titan, the same guys in South Africa that do the Bremen, Bremen multimeters. This is the Model T1832 Analog Insulation Continuity Tester. So, when you open it up, you have your test over here. I prefer the needle. Digital displays are all very well and nice but uh, for the purposes of this um, I just find it's easier just to take a glance down and have a look and not get too involved with the actual digital readings and stuff like that and just get the job done. Um, this does a fantastic job of doing that. Now when you look at the back there you've got your two connection terminals, your earth and your line. Um, comes in quite a nice sort of uh, secure box to store it. My clip is damaged but that's neither here nor there. And then inside you've got your meter and you've got your test probes etc. Now this meter can be used to test 250 volts with 100 mega ohms uh, sort of um, level maximum reading, 500 volts with a 200 mega ohms and 1000 volts with 400 mega ohms. So basically you can make use of this for testing a lot of different installations from homes, etc. Uh, this one can also do low ohms, 3 ohm, scale. If you look, you've got 3 ohm scale, which will do half an ohm, 0.1 ohms. Uh, quite nice for doing low resistance tests, um, even on the electronic side. But uh, bear in mind, this is more of an electrical meter. Then it'll, It's got a 0 to 500 ohm scale, and then battery check. To do, check the battery, just slot it down to battery check, push the test button, and battery low or battery OK on the scale. At the moment it's showing battery OK. Um, I'll get in a little bit closer and show you guys that uh, in a little while once we look at the actual meter movement. Um, as far as testing goes, you basically, if you want to test 250 volts, you throw it in there, you connect your leads to your your, 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 your two test points, uh, whether it be your live and neutral or neutral and earth, live or earth, whichever two you want to test between. You hit the test button. Okay, before we do that, if there's power, this little light here will light up on this side, telling you that there's a live circuit to not operate, because you could damage the equipment. This unit in, in this section can also measure AC voltage up to 600 volts, I believe. Yes, uh, from 0 to 600 volts. It can be used just to check uh, AC mains up to 600 volts, which is your single phase and three phase here in South Africa. Um, and then obviously if this doesn't light up, and you know for a fact there isn't power in there, you can hit the test button and it'll send through whatever you've got it set, whether it be 250 volts, 500 volts or 1000 volts onto those lines and then check the actual resistance for you coming back with a reading on the scale. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to measure the output of this unit to see if it is doing the 250, 500 and 1000 volts as specified. Now bearing in mind this thing doesn't put out AC, it puts out DC voltage. Uh, well, my previous one did, uh, so I'm assuming this one would do the same. So let me set that up and uh, let's take a look see. So for the sake of easy readability, I've got this meter hooked up. I've got it set on the 1000 volts DC scale. I've got this set on 250 volts. We hit the test button. As you can see there, we've got our 255 volts um, on the output from this. And it's also telling me that this meter's got about a 20 mega ohm input impedance. When you throw it onto 500 volts, hit the test button, and you've got your 510 volts DC. Um, so yeah, that's all working, and um, we're still looking at about 10 mega ohms at 500 volts on this meter. Quite nice. Oh, if you want to do continuous testing, you, you either have to hold it or you can turn and lock it in place, and then continue to test the circuit. Now, this meter says it can do DC a thousand volts. I'm a little bit concerned about knocking the thousand volts out on this over here. It might be a bit too much for this meter over here, so I'm not going to go that high. I'm just going to assume that that side of it is working fine. Um, I'm quite happy with the uh, uh, what I'm finding so far uh, on the output of this meter. So yeah, we got our 500 volts, and the most common one used, your 250 volts. 
And uh, yeah, that's pretty much how the continuity tester part uh, or the insulation resistance part of this meter here works. Now next we're going to take a look at the um, low resistance scales, how they work out and how you can use it to check if there's any damage to the cables, etc. As please bear in mind, these are not precision um, electronics meters, these are electrical testers. So we've got it in the 3 amp scale now. Um, what we need to do is first zero it, so we throw the button and we basically calibrate until we have a zero on the needle over there. And now these probes can be used for testing resistances uh, up to 3 ohms. So just to test that out over there, I'm just going to grab a resistor out of my parts bin over here relatively low value and we're going to test that and as you can see this is a 1 ohm resistor and it's showing just over 1 ohm on the scale over there on the 1 to 0 to 3 ohm scale uh, which is the top green scale so yeah that works pretty well uh, just for doing basic sort of a uh, resistance test. It's also got a 500 ohm scale um, and that's pretty much what this meter does. Um, of course, like I did mention, you can test AC voltages with it. So what you can, for all intents and purposes, do hook it up. It's going to tell you that there's live power and it's going to measure your 220 volts uh, on this bottom scale over here. So that's all quite nice as well. Um, quite handy just for working on household mains or three phase mains power in a factory etc. So yeah, as far as insulation resistance testers go, this is pretty much as simple as it gets. It keeps the job fast fluid um, with no issues. The other thing about this meter over here is it's quite robust so it'll last quite a while. Simple to use. I have used the Major Tech Digital ones and I Although they're okay, they do tend to give quite a bit of problems when they start having issues with this here is very purpose built, it gets the job done. If you're wanting to do any sort of current measurements, then uh, I would back this meter here up with something like this over here, uh, which is a AC clamp meter. This is a Braben TBM3030. Uh, this one will do up to 400 amps AC. So for household and small factory work, it's more than sufficient for doing most of your uh, measurements. So a combination of these two here would actually go down quite well. Now there are other meters that I do recommend you have such as uh, earth resistance testers and stuff like that but I will get into those in a later episode. Uh, for now I just wanted to show you guys the insulation resistance tester and then uh, we're going back now to the basic uh, look and review of the TBM3030. Hey everybody, so back onto the TBM3030 Brayman multimeter. Um, this is more of a clamp AC clamp meter than a multimeter, but it does have tasks such as volts DC AC, amps AC, ohms, continuity, diode and capacitance testing. So it can still be used for basic electronics measurements etc. It does not have microamps or milliamps etc. This meter here, it may be able to measure down to milliamps but it's all going to be through this clamp over here. Um, so it's designed more for sort of household high current testing. Now, this meter works very well as an accompaniment to the previous meter that we had a look at, the insulation resistance tester, as well as the Major Tech uh, 883 uh, meter that you saw me doing the measurements of that uh, insulation resistance tester. On my electronics workbench, I make use of the TBMA29, the Fluke 87 Series 5 or V, uh, the Fluke 289, the Fluke 179. Um, and a couple of other Brahmins like the TBM811. Uh, those are my primary electronics meters and I also have a couple of major tech analog multimeters which I'm, I use for peaking circuits etc. And one of the prides on my bench is my Marconi Instruments uh, TF2604 
electronic voltmeter or VTV and vacuum tube voltmeter. She's an old girl, um, but she works very well for peaking circuits and she will also run up to 500 megahertz of AC. So very useful for doing RF uh, work. Let's have a quick look at that over there so I can... Uh, Here we have it. the TF2604 Marconi Instruments vacuum tube voltmeter. Like I said, she'll do 500 megahertz AC measurements um, and very good for testing uh, RF circuits or audio circuits where the frequency is a lot higher than your 50 Hertz etc. It's a fantastic meter to have, uh, needs a little bit of maintenance but um, still a very good piece of kit to have on the bench. But anyway let's get back onto that TBM 3030. Okay now a few things that I, I see first up with this TBM 3030, the display is very small which is not ideal uh, when working on a lot of things but the whole device is quite compact and easy to get into gaps and DB boxes etc making it a very versatile piece of kit to have the display is quite intuitive if we switch it onto volts and the numbers are quite legible but it is small um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at this um, alongside something like the Brayman TBMA29 and we're just going to do some comparisons on the DC voltage scale and see how this little meter adds up Okay, so we've got the TBM3030 hooked up uh, in parallel with my TBMA29, which is uh, in check. And I've got my power supply idling on 1 volt, uh, well just over, uh, 1.012 volts. And as you can see, 1.007 volts. So we're talking probably around 6 millivolts, 5 millivolts difference between the two meters, uh, which is acceptable. Uh, for what the clamp meter actually is. I'm just going to go up into random stops as we go like 5 volts or thereabouts and then 10 volts and just see how the two meters compare. So right now we've got 5,587 volts, 5,586 volts, 5,56 5, volts. So we're talking probably uh, a very small difference over there, 5, 6, 7, 8. We're talking 30 millivolts. Uh, still pretty much not too bad but um, it is starting to show a bit of a difference, sorry there's 20 millivolts difference between them, uh, but still acceptable. We head up to about 10 volts, 10.74, 10.72, uh, here we're looking probably 7074, once it settles, we're talking about, f oh it's still not settling but we're talking 40, 40 millivolts difference still, so yeah, okay, not too bad. Uh, jump it up to 20. Now I do expect it to see a little bit more difference between the two now. So 20.77, 20.67, so we got about a 10 millivolts difference, 9, 8 millivolts difference between the two. Now if we jump up to 30, we got 30.19, 30.07, so it's still differences there but still acceptable then the maximum this power supply will do is just under 40 volts 39.66 volts 39.52 volts so once we get to this this point over here we do notice quite a large difference of more than 10 millivolts between the two but still within specs so still quite reasonable as far as I'm concerned so that's the DC voltage test done and dusted Let's have a look at a few of the other features like ohms, continuity, diode and capacitor test and see how they stack up. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I've currently got it on the resistance test. I'm not too concerned about high value resistors, but I'd like to see how it stacks up on low resistance values. So we've got our 1 ohm resistor again, and we're just going to see what the meter reads up as. Now if we have a look at that, we've got 0 0.91 ohms. So yeah, that's quite reasonable. It does pretty well with the uh, low resistance values. Uh, just as a matter of interest, this meter, you can delta out any resistance in your leads. Let's have a look at the continuity tester. Okay, so good news guys, it is a latching continuity tester, which uh, is fantastic. The next thing we're going to have a look at is the diode test, uh, just to see how it measures the voltage drop across a traditional silicon diode. And I'm grabbing a diode here from the sparks bin, and uh, we shall do a quick test and see how it works out. Right, 
one way we have nothing then the other way we have a 0.6.7 volts so we got 0.517 volts drop now if I quickly check this on one of my other meters which I know to be accurate um, we should have a very similar reading 0.533 volts on my TBM829 so yeah for checking diodes and transistors more than sufficiently accurate um, quite a nice piece of kit um, the capacitance I wouldn't be too concerned about as I'm not uh, going to be using this for testing capacitors etc but I do assume it'll give you a decent now, rating this thing will also do frequency the battery on this unit so what I'm going to do is I've got my screwdriver over here I'm going to flip it over there's two screws in the back here to access the insides of this unit um, you don't have to take them all the way out just a few turns and they're loose and the back cover should just slide on up now if you have a look inside here there's not a lot in here in fact there's no 9 volt batteries no 1.5 volt batteries there's only this CR2032 which is the thicker 3 volt lithium um, sort of cell type battery uh, that's all that runs this meter over here as far as features go the insides of this meter are relatively straightforwardly simple you have a look at that there's not a lot in here at all very basic and straightforward probably not the best quality but hey it does get the job done closing on this uh, basic uh, review of this meter the TBM3030 not recommended um, for heavy work but for light domestic uh, electrical work no problem and for basic electrical measurements and electronic measurements it'll get the job done so yeah that pretty much covers it from the review on this little meter um, I will follow up in due course with some more uh, reviews and uh, a longer term usage profile of this meter once I've used it for a while thanks for watching